Hello YouTube. I wanted to send an update here. Been asked a few questions about my setup on how many batteries I have, different DPUs and such. So currently I have two DPUs. I've added a second. I finished off my first stack for five batteries. My second DPU only has two on it until next summer when I can afford some more, right? And that's how we go with modular, which is why I was attracted to this system. And I wanted to do something, uh, an update today because it's nice and clear. And I wanted to show on the new app, I've got four kilowatt input off of my solar currently with the house using almost two. And of course that leaves the difference of two charging my current setup. So my main inverter with five batteries is one and a half kilowatts out with only 500 watts on the second smaller stack currently going out. So 285 input on my inverter one and inverter two has a 1.1 currently. And that can get to, uh, I believe one and a half, 1.6. So I can get right at the five mark when the sun is in good alignment and all that. So the biggest question I've been getting is what changes when you add a second ultra? So for that, it's just power balance I've learned. When I had just the one ultra, things like my table saw over here, when I would run it, the lights would dim real quick and then come back. Um, things of that nature, right? So lights would flicker a little bit, the saw would hesitate just for a split second while the DPU adjusted to the load. That completely goes away when I, when you add the second DPU into the smart home panel too. So if you're gonna run the house, I would absolutely recommend doing two DPUs um, just for stability, right? And sometimes power meters will show like a brownout or something of that nature where the power just dips real quick in voltage and whatnot, which could be harmful to appliances, which is why I personally put UPSs on different devices, you know, especially things with compressors, refrigerators, the freezers, um, of course, my electronic equipment and such. Um, the other question is what happens when an inverter goes out, right? So right now you can see I have two green lights going on. So I am currently running off of both inverters. So this one is putting out 12K, this one's got, and with 28 coming in. The smaller stack over here is putting out 400 and getting in 11. And should I take my second DPU out of service, I can push the button and my load will instantly shift to the singular DPU over here. watts and then this guy went to zero on the output with still charging so that's with this the single DPL so it's uh, not that big of a deal right but then it's just load balancing so I'll bring this one back online and we sure to see this 17 dissipate there down to 12 oops let me turn it back on back to 12 and then this guy comes up to the 400 it was putting out with this symbol showing that it's engaged right there. Um, it's hot, right? It's almost 100 degrees, so I have just the circulation fan up here that just blows the air in and around the units just to help keep it cool because it makes me feel better. The other question I had was, how do I have these hooked up between multiple DPUs? So I have my high voltage side and my, well, they're both high voltage. I have my main array for four kilowatts has eight 475s i believe up on the roof so that's my main array that's my high voltage for my first dpu and then here i am on the shed for my second dpu and i wired them all in series for high voltage because it charges better right the higher the voltage the better so they're all arranged in series right now this is my input for my secondary DPU. As a reminder, put everything through your safety gear, right? Same thing over here. Put everything through your safety gear. 
to turn it on and off as needed with your safety button, right? Just please do that just in case you need it. But I ran those with standard MC4 connections. The negative, the ground goes right to my breaker, which acts as a safety switch, but it allows me to make the conversion from input um, to the MC4. So my negatives come straight here. Sorry, my negatives come straight here from the arrays, and then the positives pass through all the safety gear. Then they come in, right? And I have them labeled as, as such. I've gotten questions on that as well. And I only use the MC4 high voltage inputs on these guys. I'm not using the low voltage right now, and this is true in both cases. If you can see that guy, I have nothing but the grounds in place. So MC4 connection straight to the DPUs. I didn't have to use a combiner box because I didn't go that, go that way or anything. Uh, speed, right, was another question. So the reason I went from low voltage on the shed up to the high voltage in, in running them from parallel into series is because of the voltage. So much faster charge with the higher voltage. Um, it just seems to operate better, especially in the winter time. It just gives a better charge running the highest voltage you can. So I opted for that. And then as time and budget allows, I'll add more arrays for the low voltage side to start using the low voltage input on both DPUs and eventually a third one, which I'm going to put on the rack here and then use my third DPU. And again, just for redundancy and because I can. And my other update is I ran an EV charger because I had the extra cable and whatnot. So I put in an EV charger. I put it to a 40 amp breaker here and I limited it in the software for this for the two breakers that are in here. Um, you just run it, it's a 60 amp input on the, those bottom three. So with 60 amps I put available, I put a 40 in there because it's, I don't need more. And then I'm gonna rate limit uh, the uh, charger when I get it to 32 amp, just because I don't need to pull that much. And those will be able to be charged. The EV will be able to be charged off of the batteries and then on grid after that. So it'll help offset that cost as well. Um, I have seven batteries. They generally get me through the night. Here in the summer, I use the house fan a lot. So it runs about 300 watts about all night long. So not that big of a deal, but it doesn't quite make me through the night right now because with the angle of sun, I don't get all the charge I could. So more batteries and another array, of course, will help that. Um, particularly with a third set and another set of array will totally help with that. Other than that, charging speed, the capacity I have, I'm at what? 42 kilowatts, something like that. If I do quick math, might be wrong on that, but right, seven batteries. Um, run everything as high voltage as you can and buy it as you need it. Um, again, I did all the MC4 connections with, uh, what is it? Standard uh, solar sized wire. Um, all the way through the entire system, all the way down to here, just so that I don't over, over uh, amp the wires. But specifically with these guys, you can put higher amperage to them and they'll regulate themselves, but do not over voltage these. You'll get the magic smoke. Don't over voltage at all. Don't even come close to it. It's not worth it. You can run a little high on the amps as long as your wire and your safety gear can take it. Don't run hot wire wires but absolutely do not over voltage. And I would suggest not even getting close to the maximum voltage because you will um, potentially seriously damage these. Other than that, please send me any other questions or comments. I'd be happy to share my setup with you or if you want to, a one-on-one -on -one consultation, I'm starting to do those too with what I've done, specifics on the wire gauges and how I ran it, things of that nature. I'm happy to do so. You'll see the links here soon. But that's a quick update on my system. Seven batteries, two DPUs. Highly recommend at least doing two DPUs for stability. So each side, one DPU can take care of one 110 volt. The other side can take care of the other side of the 110 volt in your, in your setup there. Just to load balance, much better. 
I would absolutely recommend that. Any questions, let me know. Thanks.